Sonic bad. Yo, I hit the jewel, I got some goals. I sold a little weed, but I could never sell my soul. And when I'm in LA, you find me out in Lil Toe. Come up, vocal with my ramen, I'ma need another blow. Let's go. We keep trying and trying and trying to find this thing that was never really actually no, there. Sonic was never good. Hello everyone, it's your boy Dumsville here, and today I'm about to give you a hot take. It might be a bit of a controversial one, so uh, I hope people take it correctly. So uh, here we go. Gaming journalism is bad. I know, I know. Please, hold your shock to the end of the video. And nowhere else is this more apparent than in anything covering Sonic the Hedgehog. I've grown to hate all sorts of gaming journalism, and the Sonic part is the one I hate the most. You either get actual retards who claim the games were never good, or Sonic fans who take the franchise way too fucking seriously. I could do an entire video on Sonic journalism. It's a crazy, crazy, crazy mess. But if I I did, it would probably be as long as the Lord of the Rings extended trilogy combined. So today we're looking at an example of the former. This article has been going around Sonic the Hedgehog Twitter for a little bit in the past couple of days. And this article is titled, Sorry, but Sonic Games Suck. Now, you may be thinking that I hate this article because it hates on Sonic the Hedgehog by using flimsy points and logic and ignores all the good things the series has done in the past few years. And yes, this article has all of that, but that's not the reason I hate it. No, 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 I couldn't give two shits about that. The issue I have with this article is that it's exploitative. This is meant to piss people off. This is intentionally bad, not for satire, not for parody, but for the exploitation of the Sonic fan base. Let me put it this way. The writer of this article, Raymond Wong, writes a hot take article on how Sonic is no longer good. Said hot take article gets noticed by Sonic fans. Sonic fans get angry and then tweet about it. The tweet gets noticed by other people who then tweet about it, reading the article and attempting to debunk it. More people trying to read the article means more people clicking on the website, and more people clicking on the website and the article means more fun. Fucking money! Do you really think this article was meant to be good or persuasive or anything? No, it wasn't. It was meant to exploit the Sonic fan base, and you fell for it. There is no way that this article, conveniently released on Sega's 60th birthday, wasn't made for the sole reason of provoking for a quick buck. So I'm not going to be looking at this article as some sort of Sonic the Hedgehog hit piece. I'm going to be looking at this article as what it is exploitation. Also, I advise you guys, don't look up this article. By doing so, you are giving this guy the attention he does not deserve. If you really want to read this article, then keep watching this video. If you need to, edit out my commentary and just edit in the article parts. But don't read his article yourself, you're only giving him the money he wants. Anyways, that's all I had to say, so let's get right into it. No, I do not give a fuck, bitch. No, we did, bitch. Video games aren't what they used to be. They used to be Cars the video game, now they're Cars 3 driven to win. New video games all look and feel the same. I agree, I mean, that new Spongebob game is clearly ripping off Modern Warfare 2019. Every main character is a space marine with a crew cut wearing Master Chief-ish armor, and a big ol' blaster who's off to an alien planet to shoot the face-off monsters. Genius. <laughs> what era do you live in? 2008? Do you live in the era of Halo killers? This joke is absolute bullshit. I genuinely look at nearly every game that's coming out this year, and only two of them fit the description mentioned here. One of them is Doom Eternal, a franchise that existed before Halo, and the other one is actually Halo. Halo. This wasn't always the case. Not in the early to mid 90s for sure. After after Mario dethroned Pac-Man as the face of video games, Sega tried to kick the plumber's ass with a cooler, edgier, literally faster mascot of its own, Sonic, Sonic the, the Hedgehog. Hedgehog. 
one of the greatest and most Gaming. attractive characters Gaming. ever thought of. Sonic's debut in 1991 on the Sega Genesis Mega Drive in Japan brought terror to Nintendo's Dominion. Here was a character who had more attitude than Mario in every way. Mario is my homeboy, especially Tanuki Mario. It's it's just Mario in a Tanuki suit. Why would he be special? But Sonic was the rad new kid on the block. I tangled with Sonic on my friends Genesis and Game Gear, even though my family was a Nintendo household. Had to uphold the strong Christian values of Nintendo. I woke up extra early to watch the Sonic cartoon on Saturday mornings and even own his comics. Guys, trust me, I was a Sonic fan in the 90s, please. Sonic, the character, gave me a rush of excitement in the 90s. And that's how I found out I was a furry. Please, kill me, please. I don't want to live anymore, please. His games, not so much. Too fast. Whoa, dude, nice, uh, nice overlaying text. That's really modern, really minimalist, dude. Really, uh, 2020. 2D Sonic games were too fast. I mean, that's, uh, kind of the point. His games literally gave me headaches and made me want to vomit every time I'd accelerate him through green hell zones, roller coaster loops, collecting gold rings along the way before he ran smack into an enemy, or bet of spikes only to lose them all. Sounds like you fucking suck at the game, dude. Also, this has to be a personal problem. Like, you're probably one of the seven people who gets motion sick playing Sonic the fucking Hedgehog. And yet you're judging the game on that? What do you want the game designers to do about it? Are you fucking retarded? Man, if this dude gets sick playing Sonic, I wonder how he'll feel playing Need for Speed. Ooh, yikes. Maybe it was my young, sensitive, and developing eyes, or my tendency to get motion sick when I was young. I get car or bus sick all the time. That made Sonic too challenging to control. And there's your problem. See a fucking doctor. Doctor. There is very clearly something medically wrong with you if that is happening to you. Or maybe it was the fact that Sonic was blue running through a level that was also mostly blue with blue water and blue sky. How many fucking straws do you have to grasp to say shit like that? Did anyone at Sonic Team, the developers behind the original Sonic games... Wait, what? You're telling me that Sonic Team made Sonic? Nah, man, that's clearly bullshit. Everyone knows that Infinity War made Sonic. Did anyone at Sonic Team even look into something called contrast? Oh man, Mario wears blue overalls and blends into the blue fucking water and sky. I can't tell where Mario is. Where did Mario go? Whatever the reasons were, they made it impossible for me to stick with Sonic games. I'm not ashamed to say I've never finished a single Sonic game in my life. You probably should be ashamed of that, to be honest. That's kind of pathetic, dude. This dude really sucks at video games. In comparison, I've played basically every Mario game and completed all of the main platformer ones on every Nintendo console. Even more so than a movie, pacing, especially on a 16-bit console, is important. I hope this guy never has to play a racing game in his life. Could you imagine the vomit? Hi everyone, welcome to uh, Raymond Wong Gaming. <laughs> Today we are uh, playing Mad Max the video game, a uh, really good game, uh, I hear it's really good, can't wait to play it. Uh, let's get in our car here, this is going to be a lot of fun, I'm expecting a really user friendly experience, and I'm up. Uh, oh, oh, too fast, oh, 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 why is your for me, Sonic was too quick, making a mess of all the pixels on the screen, and turning everything into a blocky, migraine-inducing experience every time I dared play his games. Dude, that really is not normal, please see a doctor. It was literally impossible to zoom through a level at Sonic speed and not run into enemies a zillion times. I mean, that's kind of the challenge, isn't it? That's like blaming obstacle courses for having obstacles in them. It almost sounds like you suck at Sonic and are blaming Sega for sucking at Sonic rather than yourself. Dark Side Phil syndrome at its finest, clearly. What are you supposed to do? Slow down? Yes. That kinda defeats the whole point of Sonic. So if Sonic slows down, it defeats the purpose, but if he speeds up, he makes you motion sick. So what do you want Sonic to be, dude? Things didn't get better when Sonic leapt to 3D, or even the pseudo 3D games like Sonic 3D Blast. Oh boy, here we go. The Sonic had a rocky 
Loki transition to 3D argument. An argument that does not work. Because when the game came out, it was reviewed highly positively. But Domsville, Sonic Adventure aged poorly. Okay. So, whether or not Sonic Adventure aged poorly is irrelevant. Because when Sonic entered into 3D at the time, the game critics loved it at the time. If anything, Sonic had a smooth as fuck transition into 3D. And it wasn't until, like, Heroes or Shadow the Hedgehog when it even became rocky. So, if you're saying Sonic had a rocky history in 3D because of Heroes and Onward, that is acceptable. But, saying that Adventure was the start of a rocky 3d era is completely bullshit because you are putting a modern perspective on a game that at the time didn't have said modern perspective and treating said modern perspective like that was people's opinions back in 1998 which once again is complete bullshit Despite superior graphics with more polygons, remember when polygon count would get everyone hard? Sonic Adventure for Dreamcast didn't have the same fine-tuned controls as Super Mario 64. In Adventure, it wasn't so much the speed that I had beef with. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Kinda weird how, uh, the, uh, motion sickness kind of, uh, disappeared when Sonic went to 3D. Seems kinda sus, bruh. As it was the poor camera angles. So, static 2D camera makes you motion sick because of the speed, but I guess motion sick isn't even mentioned here when you bring up bad camera. I don't know, man. This just all seems kind of sus, like you're faking something. I don't know. I could be wrong, but it just feels like something is off. I remember playing a demo of Sonic Adventure at a Dreamcast kiosk at the now dead JNR Music and Computer World store in New York City and being so frustrated with the camera controls. I I swore off Sonic games forever. You know what? I'll give him credit. That was a common complaint back then. Okay, I didn't give up on Sonic, but the bad camera pushed me to double down on Mario and waited out for the GameCube. Blame it on the hardware. Maybe Sega was trying to do too much with a limited processing power that wasn't ready for what they envisioned for Sonic. But that doesn't explain what happened after consoles got way more powerful. He's gonna bring up Sonic 06. History of bad. Sonic games may have been a bastion of the intense rivalry between Nintendo and Sega in the early 90s, but his games took a nosedive when Sega quit the hardware game in 2001 after Dreamcast sales fizzled for a few years. Since going multi-platform 19 years ago, Sega has squeezed Sonic for all he's worth, letting almost any developer get a taste of his spiky blue vitality. Almost any developer, huh? That's kind of funny because the only developer who makes Sonic games is Sonic Team. But you know what? Let's look at all the Sonic games not developed by Sonic Team and see if you're right at all. First of all, you have Sonic Advance, which was developed by Dimps, who also developed Sonic Rush and Sonic 4, and also a company you praise in the next sentence. With the exception of a few Sonic games, and namely the 2D Sonic Advance series on Game Boy Advance, developed by Dimps, the Blue Hedgehog's outings have been mostly unimaginative. So, according to you, this isn't one of the random developers like a threw at Sonic. Alright, okay, check them off the list. And then there's Bioware, who made Sonic Chronicles, which, come on, dude, it's Bioware. And this is post KOTOR and Mass Effect 1 Bioware 2. This isn't some random studio. This is Bioware. So, check them off the list, too. And even then, all of these and some other games are all spin-off games. They're not even that important to begin with. In fact, with the exception of Sonic 4, which we already mentioned dimps, the only mainline Sonic games Sega threw at some random developers, quote-unquote, were Big Red Button and maybe Chris Whitehead. But the latter made Sonic Mania, a game that, whether you like 2D Sonic or not, was praised by critics. And once again, the only non-spin-off Sonic game that probably proves your point is Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric which is a, still a spin-off game, but it was a kind of big budgeted spin-off game, whatever. It was released on big consoles, it was a decently big game, and it failed hard. So overall, I don't know if this is you just not knowing about game design or game design terminology, but Sega did not throw Sonic at random developers, at least not in the way you describe it. If it isn't bad gameplay, then it's a cringy story. Sega keeps dropping the ball with almost every new Sonic game. Who can forget 2000? 
6's Sonic the Hedgehog reboot for the Xbox 360 and PS3. Aw, uh, yep, knew it. I fucking called it. I'm glad to see that critiquing the Sonic franchise hasn't progressed since 2009. The one where Sonic kisses a human girl. Remember when Sonic kissed a human girl, guys? Whoa, that was crazy, wasn't it? In the lips. It's on the lips. C minus. Get better grammar, kid. Just think about that for a second. You'll never be able to erase that grotesque hedgehog on human lips action from your memory. Imagine if Crash Bandicoot puckered up with Princess Peach. You'd have nightmares. Oh, dude, if you think that's bad, you should have seen what I saw on Google Images. Sonic Riders, a game where you play as Sonic riding a friggin' hoverboard, seemed promising but failed to meet expectations. The game was nothing more than a cheap attempt to capitalize on the growing popularity of skateboarding and snowboarding in the mid-aughts. Sounds like you had pretty high expectations for a fucking spin-off game. I will give you that though, Sonic Riders was pretty bad, not gonna lie. Do I even need to elaborate on the universally panned Sonic Unleashed? I mean, it's certainly not panned anymore, that's for sure. Another cool idea, Sonic can transform into a goddamn werewolf. Wasted at the hands of Sonic Team. Care to elaborate on that? Mediocrity in full force and proof Sonic Team needed an internal reboot. Oh wow, that was a short critique of Sonic Unleashed. It's almost too short. Almost like you've never actually played Sonic Unleashed before. But you wouldn't lie about that, would you, Raymond? <laughs> would you? Or how about Sonic Boom Shattered Crystal for the 3DS or the Wii U exclusive Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric? I'm rolling my eyes so hard right now. Funny rolling eyes. Twitter give funny funny laugh. Does anyone even want new versions of Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games every other year or so? Every other year or so? You mean when the Olympics happen? Sure, pairing two of the most iconic video game mascots of all time in a single game is a license to print money. But has anyone ever played these games? They kill brain cells. Hey, don't you dare insult Mario and Sonic at the Winter Olympics like that. I liked that one. They'll rip your eyes out bad for anyone except children who don't know any better and are there for the Wii Remote Waggle. Hey, um, who's gonna tell them? Yet, people keep buying them and signaling to Sega and Nintendo that they should keep making new ones. Ain't capitalism beautiful? Not even Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing can get me jazzed, and I'm a huge racing fan. Arcade, simulation, you name it. I'm surprised you didn't get motion sick playing them. It's nothing more than a subpar ripoff of Mario Kart that I had a hope would be more fun because the vehicles transform, but eh. Care to elaborate on that? Sonic Dash for iOS and Android? A cheap, endless running cash grab masquerading as a game that's really designed to rake in as much in-app purchases as possible. These kinds of games with IAP-focused designs are the worst, and shame on Sega for pimping out Sonic for them. Look, man, I hate microtransactions as much as the next guy. But don't act like this is the worst of the worst. You see, I can excuse a game like Sonic Dash having microtransactions because the game is free. It's the same reason a game like Fortnite has V-Bucks. Believe it or not, companies need revenue to keep them alive. So cut the free game a bit of slack, dude. Quality first. Was there ever actually a good Sonic game? I mean, according to you, you liked Sonic Advance, didn't you? Which actually, that's weird. You said you didn't like 2D Sonic games. Because according to you, they were too fast. And yet, Sonic Advance has a much more bigger emphasis on speed. Wow, that's kind of funny, isn't it? How you can contradict yourself like that? It's almost like you wrote this article purely for attention. It's almost like you tried to piss the Sonic fanbase off. Well, good job, it worked. Sure, I liked Sonic Generations, but most Sonic games were terrible. Now, isn't that funny? Generations is even faster than the 2D Sonic games. And yet Hideo Kojima number two over here didn't get motion sick. Isn't classic Sonic like in Generations or something? This is really fucking sus, dude. The 90s and 2000s had a way of distorting our memories and fondness for the Blue Hedgehog because he was the only comparable mascot who nearly gave Mario a run for his money. Way to throw Troy Eichmann football under the bus. The competition was so scarce back then and information not so instantly distributed that we latched onto anything that diverged from the status quo of Mario saving Prince.
Princess Peach. Internet bad, I can't click the book. All isn't lost. Sega can write Sonic. Take a page from Nintendo. Ooh, yikes, not a good idea. The game company has pumped out Mario games since 1983, and very few of them have been duds. The reason is very simple. There's a bar of quality for Mario that creator Shigeru Miyamoto has it for himself and the next generation of developers at Nintendo who handles the franchise. Hey, remember when that didn't happen at Nintendo? It takes immense discipline to say no to bad ideas and only release games when they're good and ready, not because of scheduled deadlines. That's how you maintain an enduring level of satisfaction for a single plumber spanning different game genres over 37 years. And you know what? I agree. I just wish you weren't so fucking belated. I will always love Sonic as a character. He means that sexually. He wants to fuck Sonic. He's so cute and cuddly, and thank God they fixed him in the movie. Of course you bring up the movie. It's right next to Sonic 06. How many more Sonic is bad because X cliches are you going to bring up in this article? And he'll forever be synonymous with Sega, but his game sucked. They truly did, and they'll keep sucking if Sega doesn't realize this. Again, you're already too late. I don't need to apologize for the mediocrity. At least you're self-aware. Sega does. This ending reeks of written in one night. So that was the article, sorry, but Sonic games suck. And this article about Sonic games sucking, uh, it really sucked. It was really bad. This man never went in depth as to why Sonic games that he didn't like were bad. Would it kill you to say that the Sonic Unleashed combat was bad or that the controls and Sonic Riders were confusing? Instead of saying, oh, this was a cash grab. Oh, this was a waste of potential and not act like you look at the IGN score once. And most importantly, would it have killed you to not bring up Sonic 06? Making a big deal out of Sonic 06 nowadays is the equivalent of saying that the entire Postal series is bad because Postal 3 was a disaster. Yeah, that game was awful, but the franchise has moved on since then. Years have passed. So yeah, this article is a mess. Moving on. Now, if it wasn't apparent already, this article was not written as a genuine piece. This was very clearly meant to piss people off and provoke people. However, if you want further proof, look no further than Raymond Wong's own Twitter. It's one step away from being a confession piece of faking the article. Oh, what's that? You want evidence? Well, here you go. This tweet was posted a day before the article was published. It's Sega's 60th birthday, so we're doing Sega Week. Get ready for a hot take from me tomorrow on Input Mag. I might break the internet. Hmm, seems pretty sus, right? Seems pretty suspicious. How about this tweet posted the day of? Come at me. He's asking the fans to come at him. Hmm, seems like a bit of an attention whore. Speaking of attention, this article has been getting a ton of attention on Twitter, to the point where Sonic fans have been fighting this man on Twitter. And let me just say, this man's debating skills are next level. So firstly, this Twitter user quotes the whole Sonic is impossible to zoom through levels with thing, and then links a Sonic speedrunning video, saying, behold your worst nightmare. Pretty funny and pretty good way to fight his points. Ray Wong, however, the master debater, replied by saying, what's the point? You skipped the whole level. Laughing while crying emoji. Laughing while crying emoji. This prompted another Twitter user to reply. He was just proving to you that you can zoom through a level. Classic Sonic always gave you the choice to explore or zoom through. Prompting Ray Wong to reply, K dude. So this guy can't even stand by his own fucking points. So what, what a genius. What a true genius, dude. And all of this hatred Raymond Wong was getting prompted him to tweet, oh no, the gamers are very mad. So as you can tell, Raymond Wong doesn't actually care about the Sonic franchise or anything. He just cares about getting people riled up and angry. He doesn't care about Sonic being good or anything. He just cares about getting people pissed off and clicking on his bullshit article. And the sad part is, you all fell for it. You all made tweets about the article. You all linked it and complained about it. And you gave Raymond Wong exactly what he wanted. 
attention. This man is a journalist by occupation only, but he isn't a real journalist. He's a scam artist, getting you to click his bullshit articles and in turn giving him more money. So whatever you do, please don't go out and search this article. You are giving him exactly what he wants. What this man wants is attention because attention gives him clicks and clicks give him money don't fall for it. Thank you all for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed it and learned something from it. In this weird and crazy world, you can't just trust anybody. So remember, be nice to each other, stay safe, and I hope you all have a wonderful night. And most importantly, I will see you guys on the next Dumbsville video. Beep, beep.